Hi, uh, good afternoon and thank you for coming along to the Missional Thread Seminar organised on the Forum. My name is Lindsay. I'm hosting sharing session. I'm a regional minister network with a brief relating to new church pioneering, mentoring, missional leadership, basically listening and looking to see what the spirit is up to and whether and how God might be calling us to get involved. That's definitely less feedback now, which is fantastic. Um, but as everyone knows, uh, whatever their role, there's major upheavals, uh, challenges across the globe right now. Uh, politically, economically, environmentally, and of course with, with COVID-19 too. Uh, a quick glance at the news. Um, we see here uh, fear, uh, grief, instability, inequality, injustice, dislocation, and often unsettling, rapid, discontinuous change. And it feels as though a lot of things that were certain are kind of unravelling right now. Um, God's people are not immune from that. Um, we're in the world alongside, aren't we? We're doing life with, or we should be at least. Yet God's people are called to live as ambassadors of God's kingdom, as pilgrims on a journey, uh, as perhaps people who are drawing together some of those, those loose threads and reweaving some Thing that is a foretaste of the kingdom of God that points uh, towards Jesus. And the questions I wanted us to kind of explore are, firstly, what have you sensed the Spirit saying to you, your community of Christ, your church at this time? What's he calling you to take up? What's he calling you to lay down? And secondly, how is your answer to that question shaping how you live? And we're going to explore those questions um, in a few short videos and by listening to conversation with our panellists who are going to introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, if you have a question or a comment that you'd like to make, please do so in the, the chat box. We'll be looking at those later in the session. Um, Whilst we probably won't be able to respond to that many of them, it's worth putting them down because as Mission Forum, we want to know um, what questions and thoughts are out there, what you're noticing, so that we can better support our churches, our missional communities and the individuals going forward. So we've got a panel here who are passionate about Jesus and about mission. And they do not want to be thought of as experts, all right? Rather as ordinary people seeking to discern amongst all this stuff going on, what an earth God might be up to and how perhaps they might best join in with it. There's lots of things that could be said about them, but here's a very brief introduction from each of them. So Kez, let's start with you. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, my name's Kez. I'm a wife, uh, a mother and a foster mom. I also work for the Yorkshire Baptist Association as a mission enabler, so working with our smaller churches, helping them stay missionally healthy and discover mission in their context. And up until really recently, I was a senior minister at Wakefield Baptist Church. So that's kind of a little snapshot of, of me. Adrian, do you want to say something about you? Yeah, thanks, Kez. Uh, my name is Adrian Smarini. I'm the lead pastor at Gamling Gay Baptist Church, um, which is a small rural church on the border of Cambridgeshire and Bedfordshire, um, married with three kids, um, which we've kind of been journeying life together with. And uh, yeah, I think we we were called into this kind of small rural context, really knowing that God was calling us to be a part of a change and transition, uh, but also bringing everybody alongside with us. And so real passion uh, and, and kind of desire to see God move through us all in that context. Um, and it's been a great kind of five years of, of learning and seeing God move in powerful ways and, and praying into what comes in the future as well. But uh, Nikki, let's uh, hear a little bit about you. Hi, uh, I'm Nikki. I've been involved in church leadership for about 20 years now. Um, married to Richard and we've led churches in London and Sheffield and Leeds. Uh, we've been in Bristol for nine years. Um, 
and we have two fantastic boys so yeah it's a real privilege um being where we are in bristol we're actually going to be moving in the summer to do um some possible church planting with a uh, woody's church in bristol and webnet together um as partnership so yeah that'll be exciting um to see what happens with that and over to phil and alice Hi, um, I'm Alice, this is Phil Lawrence. Um, I work three days a week as a primary school teacher and Phil an ordained Baptist minister. And together we're developing a fresh Baptist ministry for our home in Inns Court in Nor West in South Bristol, which is a deprived area by um, his, you know, historically, uh, but we are establishing a fresh ministry here in our renovated home. Brilliant. Uh Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I've got a bit of feedback again, I don't know. Um, but we're going to watch three short videos now. Uh, one from Rita, who's involved in World Cafe, working amongst people from across the globe. One from Eric, who is a chaplain in a school, heads up a discipleship programme too, mainly with uh, young men. And Nikki, who's a different Nikki, don't worry, Nikki Pollard, uh, who's serving up a cuppa a garden on a new housing estate. So let's watch the videos. Hi, I'm Eric and I'm a minister in training at City Road Baptist Church and a chaplain at St. Mary Redcliffe and Temple School. Uh, I run a program which is designed to help young people with their self-esteem um, and self-worth. This is a program which I initially came up with in December 2019 um, and I still haven't been able to run a session yet which is going to take me on to what I believe God is saying to me and my community at this time. Um, one thing about being the chaplain at Redcliffe during this season is that we haven't been able to run any group sessions whatsoever uh, because of Covid and the restrictions. Each year group is in their own bubble. Um, and we're not allowed to mix bubbles at all uh, for the sake and safety of staff and students. So because of this, I've been getting to know the students on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and that's something that God has really taught me, actually, even looking at the Gospels, where Jesus would be in a crowd for the people, but his eyes would be focused on one person, such as the woman with the issue of blood, or um, Jairus, Jairus with his um, daughter who was dying, um, or the leper. You know, Jesus was always focused on the one individual um, and from that he impacted the wider community. And I think that's something that God's been teaching me personally um, during this time, because hopefully as the months progress and we are allowed to meet in groups, I'll be able to actually run these sessions, um, these, these youth programme sessions um, outside of my role as a chaplain. But for now, I've had to put that to the side and focus on building one to one relationships with the students. And that's aided me because now I, I have much more of a deeper understanding as to what the needs are and the outcries are of the students at this time. And so for me, how is that shaping how I live and how I work alongside people? I would say it's making me much more intentional. It's making me a lot more patient and it's making me trust in God more because when God grants you a vision, it's really easy to find your legs running before you've even been given the real release to go and see that vision through and just like it says in Habakkuk you know the, the vision is, is for an appointed time and even though it tarry it will come to pass and so it's taught me to really trust in God to slow down to be intentional to see where Jesus is leading me day to day and it's not always in the, the massive things that you know we see God at work it's in the small interactions it's in the one-to-one -one interactions where I'm actually seeing that God is having such a great impact and it's enabling me to now be able to step forward into the bigger things when that time comes. And so that's what I've learned in this season so far um, in, my, in my roles at Redcliffe School. Hi, my name's Nikki and I live in Arlesey in Bedfordshire. I work for a church in St Neots, which is about 25 minutes drive away, and I'm employed as a children's and families worker. However, I feel called by uh, God to work in new housing. And um, as I've been exploring this call, I've undertaken some study. And my dissertation in 2019 focused on 
um, hospitality within new housing, incarnational living and um, spiritual dialogue. So that's about recognising where the spirit's at work and calling it out for God's work, um, God at work in people. So we moved into Alsi in December 2020 um, and when we purchased the house we found out that we had an extra piece of land attached to our purchase. Um, what was originally landscape garden as you entered into the estate became our front garden. Um, we've also got um, an extensive back garden as well and a, a nice driveway at the end of that. And so what we feel God's calling us to do is to gather the community together, to build relationships with the people here, um, and to develop things from, from that. So initially we have started gathering people online. Uh, we've done some Zoom quizzes and some Zoom game nights, um, but we've also had some face-to-face -face gatherings now that we can meet in groups of six. We've set up um, tables on our driveway in groups of six and gathered people together. We celebrated Easter with our community here with a, a big Easter egg hunt um, and gave away chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate? Um, and that was, that's, that's been really good. And the community want to continue to do those things as well. We've also found it within the community, there's quite a few Christians and we're starting to question together why God may have placed us here. Um, and potentially we may be starting a, a group that might be uh, called a, a church, um, but we're just gonna start to gather together and pray for the area. Alongside this, um, I've, I've got a, a desire to open a community space and this front garden that we've been gifted um, would be an excellent place for that to take shape and so I'm exploring how we might create a community hub, what that might look like. Um, initially it's likely to be under some kind of pop-up gazebo uh, but working with uh, other Christians in the community who I'm aware of we're going to start sitting out there and having a coffee once a week and trying to engage with people passing by. Obviously, my long term dream and desire would be to have a purpose built building out there, but we're starting small and seeing who God brings. Hi, my name is Rita and I live in Gloucester. I'm a founder of World Cafe Community, which is about welcoming people from around the world who are running and um, escaping war in different Middle Eastern countries and African countries, but it's not uh, exclusively uh, for these people, for refugee asylum seekers, but also for anybody else, Europeans, and uh, we've got Latin Americans, but also for local people. It is about breaking social economic barriers. It's about breaking cultural and ethnicity barriers that we build those walls around us. So this is the people that I love and enjoy spending time with. Um, at this time, we sensed or I sensed and uh, the people that um, leading um, my team, we sensed that God has left the church <laughs> in the way that uh, God is at work in people's lives and perhaps as a church we tend to think unless they come to us then they will experience God but actually God is already at work and it's for us to have that prophetic voice and seeing where he's at work and join him in and uh, um, he is in most unexpected places he is with people that are of different faiths but they are open to spiritual awakening they are open to talk about faith, about Christ, about God, the understanding uh, of who he is and this is where we are called to be and by living this life uh, with this community I learned that my prayer time has changed, my understanding and observation of God's um, Holy Spirit where he's on the move has changed uh, I have become more gracious, um, more prayerful, more listening, 
and inviting people into my life and as well accepting to walk with someone different than me accepting their views that are perhaps different that uh, perhaps it challenges me but it makes my faith grow and therefore calls uh, to stay on my knees for much longer than I used to be and um, I'm praying for uh, revival and openness of people in church that actually they would notice that actually God is outside and he's waiting to be joined in. Thank you. Wow, inspiring stuff, eh? Um, and they're even more inspiring in person. And those are just three of zillions of things that are happening across Baptists together. And it's really, really exciting. And, you know, we've, well, just, just any thoughts, actually, any thoughts from the panel about what we've just seen in terms of our friends on the video and mm -hmm. what maybe God's spoken to you, what's resonated with you about those things? I mean, straight off the bat, they, the first young man that was speaking, when he was talking about those relational connections, yeah. And in lockdown, the kind of call to deepen those one-on-one -on -one connections, that really mm. resonated with me. And I think I noticed, you know, in my initial, as a pastor, when I was doing the ring rounds early on and connecting with people, one of the blessings out of a tough situation was a deeper sense of one-on-one -on -one sharing, that the how are you, I'm fine conversations were giving way to really how people were. And when you kind of said, you know, where is God in your circumstance right now? How are you doing? People were answering in a much fuller way. And I thought, you know, if there's anything to kind of keep on pushing in terms of our practice as disciples and ministers and leaders, it is that leaning into relationships with that one on one. I think off the bat that really connected with me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree very much in terms of the, the relationships. But I think beyond, I think one of the things that really caught me about, about what they were all saying was learning to do relationships differently from what we've been used to doing. Um, you know, several times we're used to people coming to us, but how do we find ways to go to them? One-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, one-on-one -on -one relationships, but, but doing things differently from what we've done before. And I think, you know, the pandemic has forced us to think differently. You know, how we gather on a Sunday massively has changed for, for most of us, if not all of us, in the last 15, 18 months. But, but it's beyond that, actually, how do we connect with people? Um, you know, the, for, for me, one of the things that, that we've been asking a lot is, is, is what is church and, and what does that look like online? One of the things that we felt God kind of called us into was creating little um, kind of short videos that were that were missional that were sharing the 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 simple and simple fact of our faith of who who we are what we believe in but whenever we were making them it was a buddy of mine and myself and we always said it, it wasn't about the views or the likes it, it was it was about the one which i i loved as well which we heard in that in, in those little videos actually it's, it's about the one person if we reached one person who heard something uh, about who who jesus is about the, the love that he has the the grace the mercy um then then that's it's worth it and and so i think it's it's learning to do something different connecting in different ways but it also it's about the one and I, and i love that it really resonated yeah i was gonna say the same really just um it's so encouraging hearing eric talking about how he had to start doing things differently and that one-to-one -one thing rather than in groups but how that's been you know so effective and that that mm. then does it can affect the whole community can't it if you you know you start one by one but that can have an amazing effect um and i love as well that idea of god doing of course god does big stuff but god absolutely does small stuff and that is just as powerful yeah. and if not it can actually be more powerful often and i think that's that's something that i found a huge blessing you know it's, it's not always in the big huge things that are going mm. on and the bright lights it's those smaller intimate um deep things that God is doing that maybe aren't seen, but are having an incredible difference in, in somebody's life, like Adrian said, in that one person's life, what a huge difference that can make. Um, yeah, I just found that again, just very encouraging and can very much relate with that and how he's also been learning patience. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of us have maybe learned a lot about patience and grace over this yes. time when it's been yes. so <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Phil, Alex, anything on, on the videos? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sim similar kinds of comments. In a way. I was really struck by the whole one-to-one -one was, the, was the phrase I ended up writing down. I'm trying to think. And actually, you've got three completely different contexts there. And yet that one-to-one, -one mm. personalized, you know, tailor-made, if you like, kind of relational dimension within each of those, those contexts, I thought, yeah, that was really spot on, really. So, yeah. 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 Can I just comment on, on Rita's video as well? Because the phrase that stood out for me with there, she said, the people that I love. And I just yeah. thought yeah, how important whoever we're dealing with, that, you know, I mean, God loves them, but they, they need to come across as the people we love too, that we're not doing something to them or engaging for a reason, but there is a deep felt love. Uh, that really resonated with me too. Yeah. And I think it, it resonates with, with I mean, the, the, the greatest commands, right? Love God and love people. And I think so often we have, have maybe historically found ways to do that, but then fallen into our, our same routines and kind of go, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, and maybe alongside the, the falling into what we do, we've forgotten how to reach out to those that we love that are maybe not already among us. Um, and I think that what, what the three of them have been talking about, and I, I think probably all of us on this on this panel would say that actually there's been a stirring up, a re-stirring, if, if I could use that term perhaps, of, of really putting on our hearts those that, that we know God loves, but that we love as well, and thinking about how to do things differently to, to share that love with them. Mm. Yeah, a phrase that Rita used that I love, absolutely love as well, is God at work in unexpected places. And that really, again, really spoke to me. Um, so encouraging anyway, what she was saying. But, mm -hmm. you know, we know God's always at work, isn't he? But again, you know, he's in work in unexpected places. Um, and, and I think that's just a huge encouragement. Um, and again, her, her sort of saying about bringing people together from, you know, different cultural backgrounds and people who wouldn't necessarily be together normally, but how 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 she's seeing those barriers being broken down. And again, mm. you know, gosh, this is a, it's so many horrendous things, you know, obviously COVID is horrendous, but so many challenging things going on in the world. And the more that we can break barriers down and that people can yeah. connect together and love each other, um, again, that, it's, it's so powerful. It's, you know, it's an ama amazing yeah. thing. Um, yeah, I was really encouraged by that. Mm. Do you have any sense that um, now that we're kind of forced to uh, not do stuff to people because we've had to, uh, you know, we're amongst, we're in this, you know, we're, it, we have to lay down so much stuff because of this pandemic. And so we're doing stuff alongside people. So we've, we've got to love them, haven't we? Otherwise it just, no one's going to talk to us and we're not going to learn from anyone else. And I just wonder if, if, you think people have noticed more within the church they've noticed that um the god is at work outside the church do you think people are noticing that more? are you noticing that more mm. i think there's been something about a real connection with context so i was listening actually this morning to somebody who had been sharing prayer requests from her neighbors into the church community Whereas that had never occurred before when she was going to church. She's like separated those out previous mm. to COVID. Whereas now her context was automatically just kind of spilling in and spilling over and people really taking note of who's around them. Also people, you know, talking about WhatsApp groups in their neighbours, especially particularly early on in COVID. So I think there has been a kind of reconnection. I think the challenge is for us now not to lose that. In the ten, mm. you know, the number of people who say we're going back. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> don't go back. <laughs> so, so you know, the challenge to kind of say, look, we had some gifts. We had some gifts where we spoke to our neighbours, where we were forced to kind of those people in our household really look at them and learn to relive with them in a different way. Let's take some mm. of the blessings of that and really hold on to them as we share deeply with one another. And I think um, let's hope let's pray let's commit that to god that it is not just a, a fleeting moment in time but that that's something that goes in our ongoing discipleship and mission yeah i i, Can I just ask kez something and, and everyone feel free but i i know kez you mentioned earlier that you've just given up one of your roles and you've mentioned to me that that was partly because during this time you wanted to spend more time with family because families actually and how discipleship amongst families become important. Do you want to share a bit about that and anyone else too? Yeah, I think I think for me, especially in my role as minister and kind of working with people, 
I have suffered from going, you know, the mission is outside of the family walls. Sorry, my clock's going off now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I'm generally kind of, you know, going to church, going to community and really rediscovering, you know, where is it that God's at work in my life as a mother, as in my children's lives, in their spiritual development? We live with my mom as well, foster children. And just knowing that ongoing impact in each of their lives. And often, even with other people that I meet in church, when we talk about events or missional activities, we think about it in their context outside their home. And and I feel I feel a sense of shame actually of missing a beat with that. Actually, my primary focus really should have been primary. within my those whom I love and I'm loved by most are people I should be sharing God with most intentionally and really mm. rediscovering that and the richness and blessing of doing a family Bible study or complain on an evening. That has just been a, a real blessing in terms of the lessons of lockdown for us. Yeah. I, I think for, for me, everything that we're kind of talking about from, from the, the rediscovery of, of kind of, you know, family being church and things like that, are rooted in the question that that I've been really challenged by and, and really felt that God led us as a church through, which was simply asking the question, what is church? And, and I think, you know, March 2020, uh, when, when everybody had to shut down buildings and, and suddenly, you know, we weren't doing church, right? Church couldn't go, it c- couldn't exist the way we knew it. It led us to really ask the question, what is church? And, and explore that. And you know, for us as a, as a small church, we were really blessed that we were able to have like, you know, conversations with different pastors from different contexts. And not one person came back to say, a, you know, church is the building, it's the gathering on the Sunday. Not one of us believes that, yet somehow we were living that out. Um, we, we None of us on this panel or, or watching this, I would imagine, would say, yeah, church is just about the gathering on the Sunday, maybe the midweek gathering. If we're really super holy, we have two, maybe three gatherings. It, it, church isn't that, yet that's what we were living out. And so for us, it, and, and for me personally, it's been asking the question, well, what, what is church? And, and what I love about the videos even, you know, is in those contexts of, you know, Nikki saying, hey, perhaps we'll gather and, and you know, we'd be a group of people that you would, you would call church, maybe. 100%, absolutely. You know, that, that is church where, where we're gathering and we're living out that what we're called to as Jesus calls us to, and to, to love God, to love people as we're sharing the good news. And that might not look the way it's always looked. But if God is at the center of it, if he's calling us, guiding us, leading us, speaking into that, that is 100% church. And so for me, kind of like Kez was saying, one of the things I'm, I'm really kind of adamant about for us as a church uh, body, as the people, not the building, as the people, and but also encouraging anybody that I talk to is saying, actually, what, what of the past do we need to hold on to and say, hey, that's great. What of the past do we need to thank God for? But what are the past that we need to leave in the past? You know, what things do we need to do differently? Say, hey, when we do return to gathering in the flesh, what does it look like to do things as God is leading us to do now? What, what is next in us being church? Not, not, not doing church, but being church. Um, and that might start at home. You know, one of the things that for us as a church we're doing is, is something called Third Sunday. And we're going to be not gathering on a Sunday morning on the third Sunday of the month. And encouraging people to do other things and we'll, we'll have missional activities, but, but also giving people the, the freedom to say, you know what, stay home, stay home and, and maybe have a Bible study with friends, maybe have someone on for lunch. Uh, what, what does it look like for you to be church in that context? Um, what can we hold on to, but also what can we let go of? Mm. Yeah. Just yeah. to bring in Phil and Alice at this point, either of you or both, um, because you're already doing, you've been doing church differently for some time and wonder what this is all looking like for you and what, what you're picking up, what you're laying down, what you're learning. A little bit like Nikki in the video, we're putting up pop-up gazebos <laughs> quite regularly in the garden and that's been great. I mean, one of the things just before I kind of say what we're doing is, is something that Adrian was saying. I think everybody's experience or so many experiences have been different during the pandemic and during lockdown. So we've had members of our community who don't do Zoom. They don't do technology in any way. They may have the technology, but they don't do the technology. Um, And also we've had people who've been like parents who are working, both working full time, both looking after children, um, so they're exhausted, you know, so, you know, the, and then we have other people who have been able to say, oh, I've had lots of space and time and to learn about God. 
and all of those things are very different, aren't they? And so no one experience is the same. Um, but what we were in, going back to what Liz was asking, um, one of the things we've been doing is um, looking at our different Sundays. We don't have a third Sunday, we have a second Sunday. We, one of our regular big things was our second Sunday lunch, which of course we haven't done now for over a year. And that was probably one of the mainstays. That's where everybody just came around and had lunch. And it was great. And we'd have a bit of a time of worship and maybe a short message or just a chance to chat, to pray with people. And none of this has been happening. Um, and one of the things we thought would be good to do is like, how do you take those great elements? So um, at various stages of lockdown, we've gathered in the garden for one Sunday or We've encouraged people to go for a walk with one other family when that was, you were able to do that or one other person to, you know, either prayer walk or just meet, to have a coffee with people once a, once a, a month. Um, I can't remember what the other one was, but we kind of had a little pattern that we, we just wanted to encourage people. Also, going back to the whole that it's not just about Sunday. The Sunday thing is not just about us gathering on Sunday. It's about, you know, well, it's about everything. It's about life, isn't it? So really trying to sort of make that very clear in by what we do, that it's about our neighbours, it's about meeting people, it's about going out, it's about seeing what's happening in the community. And actually, there's a pattern we're going to continue. Um, at the moment, we're trying to meet together, weather permitting, <laughs> out in the gardens, because some people have just need to see people but that the idea of just meeting in maybe twos or threes or just as a couple of families will continue um whether you know whether things change or not i don't know if you yeah it's, for us it's it, it's always been a transition in the opposite direction <laughs> our, our, all of our, everything we did was so decentralized uh, that it, it was kind of based around a monday men's group a friday Man Friday, which had bacon sandwiches and stuff like that. We had a, a guitar club going on a Tuesday. Uh, we had the second Sunday lunch. So it was all sort of lunches, breakfast, community food. events, community activities, lots of food. Food, food is food is important. Jesus, uh, Jesus did ministry over the table, so I'm, I'm, we're good with food. So we got a we got a huge garden, which is a you know, which really is an incredible blessing and, a, and an amazing house as well. So. And actually, we, we made a kind of conscious decision when we began to plant a church. So we're, we, our area was within sort of the, the, the top 1%, I suppose, for multiple deprivation. And, and I think we'd, we'd seen a lot of people come. We've been in South Bristol a long time. We've seen a lot of Christians sort of parachuting in and parachuting out. And I think for us, after quite a long journey with that, we just felt, you know what, the only way we feel that with our sort of particular gifts and call to sort of engage here is, is to land ourselves in the middle of this lot move, move into a house so we found a renovated vicarage and bought it and that that was an amazing yeah the grace of god all over that really but it, it was always very much with the sense of well we got fairly limited resources here so actually rather than put those things into a, into a church building but in fact we, church, we sold the church building we liquidated the assets but always with a view actually to seeing housing provision met. So we thought, well, actually, you don't want to prioritize a, a church hall or a church building. We want to prioritize housing for people. So, uh, and, and that's kind of at the heart of our, of our, of our sense here. So actually the, the whole lockdown thing has been a very difficult journey. And I, I think the other dimension of that is that a lot of our, a lot of the people that we've connected with, uh, yeah, as Alice mentioned, uh, you know technologically uh, just not there so they can't do zoom so it, it wasn't like hey zoom's the answer the other you know it was actually zoom's a problem because because people aren't technically literate that you know they're digitally excluded in a whole variety of ways so you know so there's opportunities but it, it, it it's been a it's been a challenge for sure and we did do a sort of a monthly zoom to keep things ticking over for people who could engage that way but a bigger part was how can we keep in touch with the non-Zoomers out there? Yeah. I, I'm just thinking, because we're going to need to move it in a few moments, well, not just yet, but towards um, some questions. But that's really, really helpful. And actually, what I'm hearing is that there's an adjustment, even amongst something that was doing things very differently in the first place, there's almost an adjustment of our posture towards how we're doing things. I mean, does... Do you know what I mean by, by, you know, our posture as in 
I think we've been hearing about being amongst more, and I think that's happening for all um, all of us uh, because place becomes suddenly very important where we are living and working and and some of that working is online as well of course for people um some of that living and working and and where we're doing our leisure stuff and something that comes up again so there's the posture question are we listening more are we humbly learning from mm-hmm. others which came across from um I, 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 some of the videos and stuff um but also is there a tension between discipleship and community? And just wonder if you want to talk about posture, uh, how our attitude towards being amongst and about that tension between discipleship and community for a few minutes. I think the question of being amongst is um, is really important. And again, um, very much kind of echoing what, what Phil was saying about making sure that people who aren't online are not excluded because, you know, the church is for absolutely everybody. So we need to completely be intentionally always including everyone in all of these different ways that we're talking about. But I think um, certainly being amongst is a, is a, I mean, again, God has always said that, you know, Jesus came to earth to be amongst us and it's what he calls his church to do. And I know we know that. But again, wow, this is really the time for kind of how does that how does that look even more? And how can we um, really seek God about what is he really saying about that? And again, I think that's a really big question to be um, to be thinking about and praying about and, you know, looking around and, and listening to to the communities where we are. And how can we again, how can we bless them and love them and um, see them flourish because again that's what God wants us to do isn't it to be salt and light and to um, and, and to be with his people and also to learn from our communities and to you know like we already said bless what God is already doing because we know that God you know God is at work everywhere and um, and I think going back to I think something that maybe Nikki said on the video but just that sense of the creativity as well you know because again during Covid times we've seen so many you know many many people being so creative whether they're Christians or not or churches or not just that creativity that we know all comes from God even if people don't recognize that but um, how, how can we creatively be amongst and again not the sense of you know, I know we've been saying this for a long time, but not expecting people to come to us, but of us being amongst and blessing and, you know, stepping out, which is exactly what Jesus calls us to do. You know, obviously there is a time for, for both and for everything, but um, yeah, I definitely feel that um, being with that whole, you know, Emmanuel is really powerful. Yeah. It's what Jesus does. It's what he, I believe, calls us to do um, in our different ways. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I want to... Sorry, go on. Go on. No, no, go ahead. Go on, Kes. Go on. I was just going to say, within the kind of being present for people too, there's something in this season about being really attuned to where people are. So, I mean, we've talked in previous conversations about people being exhausted in this season. So the constant impetus to do something, to cope with change, what will we do next? And I think to be wary as, as leaders and church communities, if we kind of have a sense, right, what are we going to do next and how are we going to do it and what is our next thing and what is our new thing? Actually, if that is spoken into a people, both of disciples and of people who've not yet met Christ, who are exhausted, that is not equipping or it, it doesn't even bring God any closer to them. It, it, it just clubs you over the head with another thing. <laughs> so I think there's something about that being amongst and mm. noticing where God is. You know, sometimes in the exhaustion, God is present and God is that rest. And to notice that that is a part maybe of what the next season is too. And that is okay to claim. So, you know, there's a pressure, I think, on the church to go, right, what are you going to do with this now? How are you going to change? How are you going to adapt? And what's your next thing? And maybe the next thing is to rest in God uh, in whatever your circumstances and however that might outplay. So just kind of give a nod to rest. <laughs> Yeah. It's good. If if I could if I could just come in on to, to both of those real quick, if I could, because I think I think 100 percent we need to be aware of, of ourselves and those around us. And and rest is is the biggest thing. But I think um, where for both of those, I think that the key thing is actually what is God saying to us in that moment? Because one of the things that you said, Kez, was actually the church is saying, what are you going to do in the nicest way possible with due respect to the church? It doesn't matter unless the church is saying what God's saying, right? Unless they're communicating the word of God. And so we need to be really attuned to, to the voice of God. What is God saying to us as leaders, but as the church, as the people of what's next? And it might be a season of rest, uh, but it might be actually 
you know what, for this next season, you might as a leader need to encourage somebody else who, who's feeling rested, who's feeling ready to go because this season has been, you know, actually too much rest for them. They're, they're, we're all different. So some of us are exhausted. Others of us are like raring to go. And so we need to be hearing God and, and equipping those to do both. And just quickly in the, in terms of the, the, the being present with people. Um, one of the things that, that I think we'd all agree on is that, yes, you know, we need to be incarnation and we need to be with them. And for some of us being present with people when we're exhausted is, is near impossible. But again, being able to release others to be present as well, but also to say as much as, um, you know, I think that, that we talked about the technological stuff and how so many people maybe haven't been able to, to get online and, and we need to be aware of them and we need to bring them with us hundred percent true. But we also, at least our experience has been, we've connected with people that we had never connected with before because we started doing an online service, um, because we started putting out little short videos. And we are now in, encountering conversations um, and, and, and prayer and people, you know, we were really blessed to hear that somebody in the States came to faith from watching one of our videos. And you're like, we are in the middle of rural Cambridgeshire. Like that, that, that was, wow, how awesome is God, right? Now, we can't disciple them on a daily basis because we want that community. And so it's encouraging them to, to, to plug in, but, but recognizing that we're connecting with community online as well. And, and I guess as the millennial and maybe representing the Gen Zs, you know, our phones, our, our Instagrams are, well, probably not, you know, for all, but Instagram, you know, Facebook for maybe the older, uh, more older millennials like myself and, and others. But, but, you know, these communities are that for many people. And, and while we may not be the right ones to engage in those platforms, actually potentially praying actually what is god saying is he saying because th there's community there there's there's desperately a desire the reason these social media groups grow and flourish and blow up is because people are desperate for that and again if we're to draw you to it <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> some time for questions but absolutely i think social media actually is a place as well and we're talking about places it is a yeah. place that people inhabit and so we need to be paying attention to that and have our a kind of missional, you know, doing stuff, hanging out in social media spaces. And I remember Alice actually saying something when we were just chatting around um, uh, before uh, about all the tremendous amount of resources that are now online and the advantages mm -hmm. there that we don't have to duplicate. And actually it just, it frees up more time to be with because we're not having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so there's huge amounts um, of positives uh, to all of this as well. Um, I just want to pick up, um, there's a question from Sharon here, and Sharon's asking, how do you feel people have been responding to the message of Jesus in these COVID times, and have you picked up on an increased interest in spiritual things? I, I, think, I think for me, the answer is, is, is well and yes, so, but I've always been someone who's who's never thought that that interest has not been there. So I remember my hairdresser pre-lockdown telling me about a tonal yoga class that she went to. And me sat there thinking, I mean, what she said was weird, you know? And I remember thinking, why does she think this is normal? And and she's she was evangelizing me to try and go. And I thought, why am I ever reticent, reticent to tell her about the truth of Jesus Christ when she's quite mm. fine to tell me about tonal yoga? So, you know, I, I do think people are really open. And in times of shift and change and disturbance, that heightens that sense mm. of, of looking at the spiritual. So I think, you know, this whole season of pandemic has opened people even further I think it's us that has to readdress our expectations. Is our expectation to meet them with the story of God or to make them come to church at a time that suits us? So, and, I, and I think that's where the work actually needs to be done amongst disciples to say, you know, let's be ready to share God's story. Let's be ready to do life with people in, in a devotional way. And let's take them where they're at and see mm. where that story lands. But I, I would sense that openness has always been there. And if this has just heightened that sense of openness mm. to God's story. Yeah, I think I would. Um, yeah, exactly. Because similarly, really, I think, um, you know, everybody has that spiritual thirst, don't they? Because it's how, how we're made. Um, but I think certainly lately I have noticed a similar thing of spiritual conversations or people that are just just wondering about life because of the grief, because of the pain and the horrendous situation so many people have, 
have suddenly found themselves in over this last sort of year, year and a half. Um, yeah, and, and I think I think for sure I, I've certainly seen more of that in the various things that I've been involved with um, over this year, year and a half. Um, even, at, you know, that I help at our food, food bank and some of the thing, again, you know, that's always an incredible place in terms of just the conversations that you can have with people, uh, even when it's really tough. Um, you know, you can have amazing conversations, but again, I've noticed over this year just the, the amount of things people are struggling with, and and they are opening up about it, which again is heartbreaking to hear. But um, but I think people have got those questions even more now, just because, like Kez said, the, the struggles that people have had, the grief, um, that those life questions, um, and pe people are looking. You know, like I said, people have always been spiritually thirsty. It's how we it's how we're made. But I think now maybe there's people are verbalizing it and questioning it perhaps even more or slightly more open even to that understanding of yeah you know what is kind of, yeah just the life questions um yeah i've seen that too i, th I think yeah. the spirit the spirit certainly evidence of spiritual hunger in the west as well without any shadow of a doubt but i, I think probably the challenge uh, maybe even before all the the pandemic stuff broke out the the, the sort of the big challenge wasn't this people are spirit weren't spiritually hungry because actually they were <laughs> I was finding but that didn't necessarily mean that you would sort of see them <laughs> for a whole month do, do you know what I mean so that, so that I suppose the whole question of so bible knowledge and I, by, by that I don't mean necessarily people who are able to read the bible because I, I, I went on a bit of a, a whole journey there around how can we you encourage people to be spiritually immersed but without making them think that they have to be good readers or theologians and so so that's been a bit of a long-term journey for us but the, but the whole thing of yeah amazingly spiritually open but uh, the the thing of well actually that doesn't necessarily mean that because they came one week to something you're going to see them the next week in the same place at the same time but and it might be six weeks before you see them again <laughs> so so it's more the question of how do you engage with them yeah, you know, in that framework of actually, there's a very loose, yeah, you know, yeah, connection. They're not going to turn up every every Sunday morning, or you know, dead on the dot or nine or something, or, or whatever it is. So, and I, and I guess for me, so before lockdown, I sort of decided to start sending out a weekly text message to to a lot of the guys I'm connecting with. So, I've ever and and then lockdown happened. I thought, well, that's good because I've I managed to get some kind of weekly connection going with those guys and I've had some weeks where I've thought well I don't know I'm just sending this thing out I, I was feeling really inadequate because I was trying to think well I'm sending this text out but I'm, I've had no personal contact with some of these people for six months <laughs> and I'm kind of thinking well I hope they're not finding my text a bit of a pain now do you know what I mean but but then one day I had a text back from a guy saying oh Phil I really appreciate your text by the way do you mind if I get baptized sometime and you think, oh, well, that's good. So maybe God is there. <laughs> so you never know where God is. And I and I do think that people, I suppose the thing, if I have learned anything, is the fact that actually people do really, are really grateful and really respectful of you seeking to honour them by that kind of relational connection, even if it doesn't come quite, come back in quite the ways or in quite the times you expect. So, so just to be, yeah, open to how God that is. Just on to the next question, but I just want to, just summing that up really, it is about respect, it's about loving people. As you said before, if we really love people and really are interested in their lives, yeah. who knows what develops and what we learn in the process, uh, which is fantastic. I just want to read some comments that have been made. And then ask our, our last question, and then I'll just sum things up a bit. But here's some of the comments. Uh, we need the courage to refuse to restart some things which may be labor intensive, but of little gain to release the time to continue what, what really matters, I think. I can't see the end of what says it says here. It's disappeared off the end of the a paper uh, listening to god and people discerning the fingerprints and hints of god in our neighborhood learning to be guests not hosts that's that link mm. yeah. and not imposing but, bleh, but but doing alongside again it's disappeared off the end of the paper um being less task orientated and success driven prioritizing people over programs uh how do we just be and build kingdom rather than seek to convert and build church? God builds the church, of course. Amen. Um, 
a different way of living out the good news from many established practices, intentionally relational, incarnational, neighborhood, and less attractionally determined. Uh, someone's put, I'm learning to join with what God is doing through others, not just Christians. And I'd like to add, not just our own denominational family either. That, that is lots of that going on. How cool do you can echo this? And welcome to our woods, it says. Uh, and someone's put it, uh, as Shane pointed out last night, Jesus was responsive to the needs around him and always willing to be interrupted. Are uh, the felt mm. around us um, at the moment uh, relating to things like finance and jobs and, and well-being and things like that. So thanks for those um, comments. Just a last question before I sort of sum up a few things we may run a few minutes over because we started a few minutes late but not too many if you could give a short message of encouragement to everyone listening what would it be and I know you'd probably like to have 10 minutes to think about this but off the cuff it might not be best but, you know. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just jump in if that's all right and just say um um not that I want this to sound cheesy but unity and partnership and um doing stuff together is just great you know just generally just together mm. doing stuff together for and the same you know for the same cause and that reflects something of the glory of god doesn't it that amen that, that togetherness yeah i think one of the things i would say is stop measuring your outputs so have you grown your church have you done this have you done that and instead focus on your input and you will start to relax into God much more. So are you meeting mm. with God in prayer? Are you reading scripture? Are you sharing God's story? Well, if you are, do you know what? I, I think that will, in the end, I think that will bring its own reward. But start measuring your inputs, not your outputs. And honestly, that will just release you. Yeah. I think, I think um, one of the things I think we've been learning over this time is if you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like you're pushing against the rock, remembering that actually you're waiting for that rock to move, but actually what God could be doing is strengthening your arms and just... Uh, that's, it. that's awesome. If you're doing that, what you're doing yeah. is your arms, yeah. Yeah, I, I think if I were to say anything, I'd probably say, you know what, just pray and show up. Um, you know, pray and, and do whatever God's asking you to do. And that sounds super simplistic, um, but I think where we are so prone, I'm so prone to, to, to get lost in a whole bunch of different things and, and get stuck in ruts and routines. And actually we just need to stop and say, okay, God, what, what are you saying? Um, and, and then just show up, whatever he says, show up and do it and trust that if he's called, if he's spoken, he's going to work through you. He's going to use you mightily, maybe for just the one, but that word just is massively uh, overused because it's for the one that you're encountering there. And then, so pray and show up. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for what you've shared. I'm just going to just pull out some things that have said or that linking things together that have been typed onto my screen. Um, prayer, um, being a prophetic voice. Uh, he's in the most unexpected places. Um, being guest, not host, that hospitality, but also receiving hospitality. Um, do we have to have vision or is it more about revelation? Um, being patient, gracious, the one-to-ones, the deeper relationships, uh, the listening, the learning ourselves, the growing ourselves deeper with God. You know, actually, the posture, we, we, we so need to be listening and learning and growing deeper with God. Otherwise, the mission is our mission, not God's mission, and I don't want that. Um, learning the voice of the Spirit as we spend time with God, then we'll know where he's leading us. Um, it hasn't been mentioned so much, but just wanted to mention, it's been a time when injustices of life have been exposed uh, more than ever, uh, and the church cannot remain complacent or plead naivety any longer. Um, we've learned better, I think, and need to learn even better to do life with. But again, that guest, that host stuff. 
uh, from amongst as pilgrims, as priesthood of all believers. We're good at that. But what does it mean to equip our people to be out there, to actually really be discipling people? So they're not just good discipleships and disciples in the church, but disciples on their streets, in their workplaces, wherever God is, in their families, where God has set them already. Um, so geographical location, where we live and work is more important. Discipling people for their every day is more priority. Um, again, haven't mentioned so much, but I know when we spoke um, earlier, we were thinking about new forms of church, missional community, small groups that are intent on being a blessing in the places where God has put them. And how together, as we as God's people can draw perhaps some of those loose unravelling threads that are rapidly unravelling, it seems, at the moment, and work with the spirit to reweave something beautiful, something that is kind of kingdom shaped, that offers that foretaste of the kingdom to people so that they want the main course, that signpost people to, to Jesus, remembering that he's the one who draws people to himself. We can only point. Um, it's been a time for recalibrating, just remembering yesterday, uh, a word that's come up several times this assembly and in other places, but recalibrating around who? Around Christ being at the centre of all that we do, hence the reasons to get to know him better, orientating our whole lives around him. Um, those are the sorts of things, just to say Mission Forum, it's a national group to reflect, inform, inspire, keep the mission of God in and through the person of Jesus central across Baptist life. If you want to know more about what we do, head over to the Baptist Together website. Uh, but some of us will be certainly looking at some of the questions and comments that came through the session and using those to think about how we best in the future can equip God's people and support mission amongst us and through us. But let me pray for us. Uh, and thank you, everyone on the screen. I knew you did videos. Thank you, everyone, for, for writing in. Thank you, everyone, for listening in um, or for watching. Um, but let me pray. Lord Father, we give you the glory over every part of our lives. May your kingdom come amongst our church communities, our missional communities, and in our homes and in our individual lives. May your will be done in the places where we live our lives on earth as it is in heaven. You are our provider. Remind us of this as we do life amidst our church family, Baptist family, relatives, friends, colleagues, communities we serve. And we confess our everyday mistakes, failures, and fears to follow where you are calling. Help us act towards the people who run us, rub us up the wrong way and in the same righteous way you act towards us. Guide us, Holy Spirit, in the places we find ourselves to walk in your footsteps. I know you've already been there, <laughs> but seeking to keep pace with you and never jumping ahead because this is all about you. So we submit ourselves to you. We submit the churches we serve. We submit the communities that we serve. We submit our ambitions for those places and our hopes for ourselves to you. We submit the whole of our lives to your will as an offering of worship. Work in us, Lord. Work through us, Lord. Give us your courage, but may we be connected to the source of energy, to the source mm. that is Jesus and through the power of the Spirit minister and be your ambassadors in jesus name for your glory amen amen thank you um be blessed be a blessing and keep jesus at the heart of everything <laughs>